YouTube bubbles and ball cards back with another video it's Tuesday December 6th just a quick reminder if you wanted to join the SGC submission for December uh, please make sure to get your cards in the mail or let us know if you're local and uh, you wanted to meet up or what have you uh, to get in the submission the deadline is by the end of the week and we'll be, we will be shipping it out beginning of next week so uh, I'll be doing the preview and everything this weekend uh, but anyway throwing that out there just as a reminder to everybody um, got a fun topic today you've seen the thumbnail uh, just gonna run through some thoughts uh, about junk wax that time frame that era um, I'm not gonna you know if you're here I, I know a lot of people have been enjoying the the dramatic content i'm not here to do content to piss on anybody else's yard or uh, get into the discussions of what other folks are doing or whatever um i, I i've been having a lot of fun in this hobby whether the prices are down or people are down in in their moods or their thought process or whatever um i'm sticking to my thing and uh having a hell of a lot of fun so i hope you are as well and so if that's your kind of thing if you want to you know stick around and listen to my thoughts on the junk wax era and that time frame great if not no worries uh but anyway all of you that are new subscribers and the folks that like and comment and all that stuff i really do enjoy it there was a request um about possibly starting to go live again uh, I might try to work something out with that. I just want to make sure it's a day that I can stick to uh, being solid on, you know, being consistent, being able to go live every week or what have you, or a time or something like that. So keep on the look for that if you like to enjoy in the conversations and everything as well. But anyway, let's get to it. Uh, we got the advent calendar that we've been doing every day. Uh, we're on day number six, which actually kind of fits in the frame now, thankfully. So y'all can see when I pull this little thing and they kind of get pushed back in there. You push whatever is in there back into the uh, slot. But looks like we have another pack today. Uh, let's see if I can get it out of there. It's kind of cool how they did this, but it's also kind of tough to get some of the stuff out. So it's a Fusion Strike Fun Pack. So let's see what that is. I've never heard of a Fusion Strike fun pack before so um, let's dive in and see what it entails of course I uh, cut my nails and the pack wants to be slick so all right got it open so here is a sword and shield fusion strike fun pack there's a little I guess this is for the uh, game, the digital game. And then there's Fusion Strike on the back there. All right, let's see what we got. We have a Totodile, a Phantom, and a Nine Tails Reverse Hollow. So, so far in our packs, we haven't really had what you would consider a hit. I mean, there's been some hollows or whatever, uh, but not too much in the way of hits. But it's still fun. Cool thing to do every day share with you guys hope you enjoyed it um all right the topic of junk wax why would i make a thumbnail that says junk wax was actually great um <clears throat> few different reasons i'm gonna go ahead and go over to this real quick uh this is a video that baseball collector investor dealer chris Sewell, uh he posted this up it says a year ago I don't know if it'll give me an actual date. Let's see. September 18th, 2021 is when he posted this video up. It popped up in my recommended feed. We were downstairs uh, on the Mrs. account. It popped up in the recommended feed. It caught my eye, so I watched it. I put it back on again today and was browsing through it. And 
what he basically does in here is he starts, he combines 90 and 91 and then goes through each year individually kind of showing some examples of cool insert sets from that year he doesn't show all of them um gives like what he feels was his favorite or most significant and then he shows like the the highest sale which obviously in 2021 um you know it, it's kind of to be ignored uh but some of those inserts are still very very valuable and what does this have to do with the junk wax era well I really feel like that a combination of things between the junk wax era, the dot com internet phase coming into play, uh, eBay starting up, you know, several different factors started pushing the envelope towards manufacturers realizing you also had the youth that are like my age. We started kind of fading out of interest of it, as I said. You know, my junior year of high school, I actually was more into Magic the Gathering than I was sports cards. So these manufacturers were kind of seeing the signs. The TCG stuff came out, you know, that, that was all coming out. They kind of seen a shift in interest. Um, hobby shops started carrying TCG and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, many times you could you probably to this day, you could still ask a hobby shop owner what, like, what helps support their business the most and likely many times they would say tcg because it had such a big interest you could you could play a game with the cards you know it appealed to children as well as adults with you know pokemon and then magic the gathering and all of the sorts there Yu Gi Oh kind of almost combined the two things that had a little bit of uh, ch uh kid aspect but also kind of an adult feel to it um so there was many aspects there going on, and I think that that era just kind of pushed the manufacturers to give us some really awesome inserts. They started, you know, playing around with serial numbers. We started, you know, autographs were around 91, but they started getting even more advanced with that. We started, you know, it pushed them into getting uh, the relic cards and that sort of thing. The issue is today... I know people argue, well, we're not back in a junk era, but it feels like it. We just had this rush, this boom, and they started printing things to high heaven. They came out with a set of a set of a set of a set. You know, they try to figure out new colors and different patterns and uh different you know waves and the you know uh marbles and lavas and all this other stuff and then you get into animal patterns and it's like it just feels like a very 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 big lack of innovation creativity it's like okay you get the same picture i mean what is how many different prism parallels are there now pushing 50 right you have the same card the same identical photo, the same card, everything with nearly 50 different color and or pattern or what have you variations to it. And that's their creativity today. The people, you know, people today are chasing serial numbers instead of nice cards. And, you know, you just look at where I stopped this here on the screen. This was 1995. These are leaf inserts. You know, this Lumberjacks card, it looks like, you know, wood. It actually looks like wood. It, it, it might actually have been printed on wood. Uh, you can, I think it was, because you see here the way that Griffey looks on it. I believe that one was printed on wood. Um, they did a few sets. Uh, those firebrands that CBC or Bullpen just sent in and had the whole set done. Those were on wood by Tops. Um, the statistical standouts on the left, that has like a feel of like a baseball to it. Um, this gold leaf stars here, you know, it has the foil and everything. And then it had little laser die cut right here um, of the star was actually cut out the card. Uh, you get into this. I mean, let's go to where he has some others. I mean, you look at this here. Hot shots with all that die cut. You know, uh, the atomic refractors back in the day, they were just so beautiful. The, re the refractors themselves just popped differently. And, 
you know, we had the die cuts, the net fusions, uh, all of the laser cuts, all of this creative stuff that forced the manufacturers to, to innovate, to get creative. And I think really when it became, well, Topps' baseball license, Upper Deck is hockey license, and Panini is basketball and football license, it became more about, okay, let's just throw some colors on it. We know they like to shine. We'll make them shiny, and they'll buy it. You know, they'll, they'll chase the serial number. And there was no need for innovation. There was no need for creativity. And really, the cards today, the prices of them are absurd, and the cards are bland. I mean, we keep, even Prism, they, there's like hardly any difference from one set to the other. I'll give Tops a little credit. They try to change things up here or there. Some of their set designs are ugly, but at least they try to change them up. Um, but I think they're just like, they take advantage of us and basically just don't care because they have, you know, they have a grasp on everything. Now, it's going to get worse because Fanatics is then going to own all of it, right? They're going to have the rights to all of it. So what creativity are they going to bring to the table? That's that's a huge question because there's then no competition. They have no reason to hire innovators or design artists or anything like that. They have no reason to do intricate details on cutting a card to make it a die cut or some crazy you know, the atomic looking pattern that was just new to the hobby. Um, it's just like, I, I don't know. It, it's almost like they've, they've ran out of ideas and there was no need, nothing pushing them to be creative. And I think that the junk wax era, as bad as it was with, you know, the amount of print and production and all of that because of, you know, the amount of people in the hobby at that time. And then again, as I mentioned, the dot-com stuff, eBay popping up and all of that, it, you know, it, it kind of exposed how much was out there. I mean, you could probably still pull 87 tops cards out of couch cushions, you know, that are brand new because there was just so much of that stuff made. Um, you know, Don Russ everywhere, right? Yeah, there's no short supply of it. But even still, there's so many cards that have a significance from that time frame. Um, today, and what really made me think about this topic to do a video on it, is obviously you guys have seen, you know, I've been heavy into picking up Griffey's again. That's not something new for me. It was just something that I was doing, and I stopped, and I got into other things, and then... Now, where some of the other stuff that I was interested in, I don't feel pressured into buying it because I don't feel like it's going to like triple in price overnight. I can now be more relaxed on that stuff and I can go back to things that I really, really enjoy. And one of those things is going to a show, digging through boxes, finding Griffey inserts, you know, that that sort of thing the hunt for for the guy I like finding ones I don't have um that that's really been fun to me but beyond that it's not just Griffey right I actually grab Barry Bonds if I have a chance uh, I might pick up Frank Thomas if I see some cool ones there's players all again from that era and if you think about it why well for one yes that's the time frame that I remember most as a kid but the cards back then I just think look way better than the cards today you know don't get me wrong I love Juan Soto Ronald Acuna is a hell of a player Vlad Jr. Uh, Shohei Otani you have Julio now Bobby Witt Jr. Torkelson you know you got all these young players in the league and the card innovation is just blah like there's nothing that really excites us I've said my favorite refractor is the x-fractor why well, mostly because it looks like kind of the old Atomics. I mean, it's off, it's not the same, but it's similar to the old Atomics. It's not just boring, right? It's not just to throw another color into the color wheel. So that, that's kind of the thing, what attracts me to collecting those guys from the 90s. is not just because I watch them, it's just because the cards are cooler. And 
you know, it, it could be a big issue moving forward if they don't get creative. I mean, I'm even if they want to continue printing all of the different products, okay? Okay, fine. We had a ton of products back in the day, right? But there was something to actually get excited about. You know, PMGs became a thing. Why? Because it was a chase. It was a card that was very tough to hit. Jambalayas. Um, you know, I, I showed y'all, I picked up the new Metal Universe, uh, a cut above. That card is so... The Metal Universe Champions ruined the Metal Universe inserts, in my opinion. Um, they're just... They're such a lack of creativity. They're boring looking. You know, sure, they don't have the licensing. That's that's a minor detail. The inserts themselves, they are nothing compared to the old Metal Universe inserts. It just shows that there was very little effort put into them. Not to mention, they weren't much of a chase. They're way too easy to hit now. Those cards were tough to hit back then. It meant something to hit one. It was very cool to hit it. The card looked awesome. And then, of course, we had our players that we loved and enjoyed. Um, now, to go further of why I wanted to talk about this, today I have really just been, I, I'm working on a project that I will share with you guys at some point, likely after the first of the year. Um, I'll tell you this project led me, it, it's a collection project that I'm putting together. Um, I've been working on it, but I kind of shifted a little bit of gears into a different direction. Uh, but I've been digging through boxes today. I have, I, I don't know how many boxes similar to this here. Uh, this is just an example. But you can see here there's cards just randomly, you know, not even in a uh, top load or anything. Here's a Chrome Refractor, Jamal Lewis, Volunteer Victors um, with him and Travis Henry. Um, but there's just like, th this has all kinds of stuff in it. Like Dragon Ball Z cards. I have boxes upon boxes like this where there could be stuff just in it raw. There's a lot of top loaded stuff. You know, it. God knows what eras. You know, here's a finest uh, Eddie George. Absolute Eddie George. You know, Star Child. Another, speaking of a good insert. You know, you had the star dates. There's the Star Child. Uh, look at this. A simple tops, stat stars. You know, so I was digging through all of this stuff, looking, I'm actually hunting for three cards from the Junk Wax era that I know I have, uh, I just don't, <laughs> to be <laughs> funny as hell, I have no clue where they are, um, and I know I have many of them, not just one, they're legit Junk Wax era cards uh, from 89, 90, and 91, to tell you, uh, baseball. Uh, so I have tons of them. I just don't know where exactly I put them. So I've been hunting through boxes. And as I was pulling out all of these, these you know, cards from the mid to late 90s and early 2000s, it just kept, like, resonating more and more. Yeah, I loved Griffey growing up. But I loved the way the cards were back then. Even if it is a, you know, it, even if some of these cards are only worth a couple bucks today from the 90s, I mean, there's just stuff you cannot argue. Look, this is a racing card. Like, we're not getting stuff like this today. This is a Jeff Gordon, you know, obviously, uh, like a chromium foil type card. Awesome die cuts there. Designs back there with the engine and everything. We just don't get this stuff. The cards today are just, they're bland. Um, you know, the finest, when, when they brought all that out to give us the, the chromium stuff and they had the protectors and everything on them, and then you got a refractor, if you dare pull that off, holy cow, the way that it shined, it was just incredible. Then you had flare. I mean, this is just a base card, and look how clean it looks. You know, you got the kind of the portrait image here, the action shot, and then that metallic-looking background on it. I mean, flare, and then they went with the... The, um, the row three, or row two, row one, row zero. Sorry, there was no row three. You know, the, the masterpieces, all of the, that stuff. It was just a different time, man. And 
I just don't know. Like, if we didn't have the Junk Wax era, would we have ever gotten the creativity that we got moving forward? You know, if if we didn't have it, would the 90s had progressed the way it did? And why can't we get that back? Like, why can't these companies with the technology? Let's be real, guys. That's the other, that's the other crapper to all this. Some of these cards I'm pulling out of the boxes, like, like this Favre. Okay, this has been sitting in a box just like this. And looking at this card, it's in pretty damn nice shape. Not even in a sleeve. Just in a cardboard box. It's got a nice gloss finish to it. And look at it. Just in a box like this. No protection, no nothing. And it looks really freaking good. We can't even get cards out of a pack today that don't have scratches and shit centering way off. I mean, I get it cards weren't perfect before, but look at that, man. They actually took pride in making cards back then. Today, they just don't care. And, you know, I, I don't want to sit here and give like a Rudy Rand or anything like he does with Magic the Gathering, but it's getting hard to buy this shit. I mean, it just is. It, it's getting hard to spend your money when the, it's like why should I care I, I tell my son this sometimes about things in life you know and, and trying to motivate him and you know I'm kind of getting on the same route with with some of the card the newer card stuff like why should I care if they don't care why should I buy it there's enough out there that I can have fun buy and enjoy I don't need the new stuff and if they don't care then why should I care and it's a fair question. So, again, um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. You know, I, I get it. The, the value isn't there. You know, it was overprinted, overproduc over, uh, overproduction. I can't even talk. Um, you know, it was a wow factor when we seen how much of it was out there on eBay. I get all of that. But I really think it helped us and, and created a lot of cool stuff especially in the mid to late 90s. Um, I just don't know. They might have continued on the same old boring pattern if it was never deemed, found out, coined, phrased, uncovered of just how much was printed in the junk wax era. So that's my thoughts on it, guys. Um, you know, if you're ever down or, you know, the negativity, the dramas, all that stuff, you just want to kind of get away from it. Um, hopefully you have boxes like this. Just just go grab a random box of cards. Uh, I'm Y'all are probably better organized than me. Uh, I have just, again, y'all seen what I pulled out of there. It's just random stuff. Um, but I have boxes upon boxes like that. And that's one of my favorite things to do. Is just sit down and grab a box. You never know what you're going to find in it. I found a Draymond Green rookie. All kinds of stuff, just going through boxes today. Griffies that I didn't know I had. Um, a bunch of uh, old tobacco vintage cards were in one box. Um, right here. Look at this. Here's a, not in great shape, but it's got a crease. But here's a 83 OPG Luke Skywalker. Bunch of old vintage. These are, you know, old cigarette cards and stuff. Like... Uh, country flags and everything um, th these are cigar cards or cigarette cards um, just in random boxes I mean hopefully you, you know hopefully y'all are a little bit better organized but hopefully you have that that ability to just go grab a box off a shelf sit down and look through it you know just enjoy the enjoy the cards and uh enjoy the hobby so it doesn't always have to be on ebay or com c or whatever um my slab it, it doesn't have to be always looking to buy something you can sit down and just go through and enjoy what you have so um but anyway that's all i got for you guys again those of you that watch thank you uh give it a thumbs up comment let me know your thoughts if you haven't subscribed and you enjoy it give me a subscribe and uh as always folks stay safe stay healthy and until the next video I'm out.